Welcome back to a new video on the MPC and in this one we need to talk about plugins, uh, instrument plugins and effects. Now if you already know how to work with plugins, you know, plugging uh, programs and then how to work with effects, I'm not going to teach you anything new. This is going to be pretty, you know, pretty basic. But you know, if you're starting with the MPC and you want to know a little bit more, maybe you want to stay. Now, when it comes to plugins, you have two formats, pretty much. You have the instruments, which are, you know, this uh, type of programs. And then you have the effects, the, the ones that you can, for example, when you go to the inserts. But before, if you like all of this, please like and subscribe. And this channel is supported by viewers only. If you want to buy me a coffee to say thanks and help the channel keep going on, you can. You have links on the description for PayPal, YouTube thanks and Patreon. So, okay, I am in a clean, super clean project, you know, a new project. So when you want to choose a plugin, you just select the plugin. And then at the bottom, you need to, of course, select the plugin that you want to use. And then the preset, if you go to the plugin, you can use the encoder to maybe select a different plugin. And when you do so, it will give you this screen. From factory, you get just uh, three, but you know, you can install more instruments and if you buy them, uh, you are going to be getting more. I guess, you know, this is pretty obvious. So when you want to select one, you can go to the encoder and just press it. Now still, when you go to that screen and you can do it by double tapping at the bottom, you have two options. You have the type, which is what we have right now, but you can also go for, to manufacturer. And this will, you know, give you more information about who built the plugin and notice that both options are selected. So if I go here, you know, this one is going to be pretty crazy. So yeah, you, you can do so. If you want just manufacturers, you can do so. In this case, I guess the most popular is going to be the type. I'm going to go to maybe the tube synth for now. Once you select your plugin, you need to select the preset. And right here, you know, you can audition the different presets. You can go right here with the plus and the minors that you have below the scroll, or you can do the encoder and just, you know, change the presets on the fly. That's one thing. Now, the thing is that maybe this tiny little view, it's not so helpful. So you can just double tap and it will bring you or take you to this screen. And right here, notice it says synth. And it's because you are inside a category. Now on this one, when you select a different one, notice that it's the same sound, so you cannot audition. But with this, you can maybe double tap and made a mistake right here. You can just tap and then you can, you know, check the preset. But this is screen, when you go there, you can press back and it will take you to the presets or the category selection of the instrument. So, you know, if you want some pads or basses, well, you need to go there and then only then you are inside that category. Maybe I want to select this one and I made the same mistake again. And then you can audition how it sounds, but only here you can toggle to a different preset. Now remember that when you're working with a program, you know, even a track or a sequence, it's always useful to, you know, rename it. So on this one, I'm going to call it whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just to identify this program. So the selection of the plugin and the preset is what we've been using is the more traditional way of selecting plugins and uh, plugin instruments and presets. Now you do have a, a, a different way, which is going to be the sounds. So, okay, so this sounds, this was uh, added on a different, on a firmware update. And right here, you have a more, you know, visual way of finding uh, plugins and presets. When you go to sounds, you can select one of the many uh, instruments that you can have. Right now, now, again, I have the default ones, but you know, you can go to the baseline. And once you do so, it's going to take you directly to the categories. You don't need to double tap and go to the to the side a drawer. You know, you, you just don't need to do this. So you can go even to basic select one and audition and just tap and you know even with the encoder just select and audition the different presets again if you go back you can go back to your uh you know your presets and uh i'm gonna go select that one and you know it's just much easier than you know than the other way just more visual just you know just a better interface now at the bottom you have more uh, more options. You have the minus and then you have the plus and this is talking about the track. So if I go to the next track it's going to say 2 or 3 or 4. It depends on how many tracks you are using. So you can, you know, go to different tracks 
and change the presets and even audition the different presets. Now, there is one thing that you need to be aware of. I'm going to be going to this preset and I'm going to go to this track and I'm going to rename it the same way. I'm going to say Tim. Now, I'm going to be going to a different track and this one is going to be called, uh, I don't know, Steve. There you go. So now we have the Steve and the Tim, but Steve is still using the same preset than the other one. So we have two tracks using the same plugin. So if I even go to uh, the browser and go to, I don't know, the tube synth, there's that it gives me a message. For now, I'm going to cancel. I can go to baseline and to change the bass. But now if I go to a different track, Tim is the same preset because, and let me go to Steve, it's the same preset. So two tracks can use the same plugin. That's why when you are on a different, uh, when you change, you know, a different instrument and you have two tracks using the same one, it's going to let you know, dude, you are using this instrument, this program instrument, instrument program uh, on two different tracks. If you change it, if you change the plugging or the instrument, you can have two instead. Then you can decide what you want to do. Now, in this case, I want a new program. So when you create a new program, now and only then, you know, you go back to here. Steve has a new plugging, but if I go to Steve, I'm sorry, TM Tim, it has the Tim, the Tim uh, preset. And now it's really useful because, you know, you can go to sounds and if I play something, this is going to be Tim, but when I go to Steve, it can be a different plugging. So now you're using two plugins. Now notice that there's something uh, funny. If I go to maybe Tim and I go to sounds, notice that it will give you this part of the interface. And if I play it, you know, I do have a preset loaded called baseline and then slow one. But when you go to sounds, it doesn't show right here where the preset, where the preset is. It's not giving you the folder or the location. That's why at the top you have something that says locate preset. If you press it, it's going to navigate to the preset that you have loaded on this instrument. If I go to the next one, in this case, you know, it's doing it. So that's why you don't get it because it's going to be that preset. So when you uh, change tracks, if you're not uh, seeing the preset that you have loaded, locate preset will take you there. And one more thing before we move on to the next one, when you are on sounds uh, and you are deep, maybe I'm going to locate the preset, you can always again go back and it will take you back to the instrument selection. So you can choose a different instrument from here. But if you do one more, it will take you to the program type. In this case, I guess we are on the Tim program. Yeah, we are on Tim. So if I go back right here, one step or one, you know, directory, it will let you change the type of the program. It was a plugin. Let's say I want to make it a drum program. So now you are in drum and notice that this one changes to a drum. So, you know, this is useful if you want to really, you know, change the program from here, from this interface. At the bottom, you have more options. You have the sounds, but if you tap it, this will take you to the favorites. We're going to talk about this in a minute. Then you have set lists, which is something that maybe we're going to discuss in a different video, just like the key ranges. This is, you know, it's going to take a long, a long time. So we're going to discuss this on a different video. But then you have more options. Now they're going to go back. You have more options like the edit instrument. So this is where you go to edit whatever preset that you selected uh, on this uh, program. Now you can go from here, just tap it and it will take you to the, uh, the plugin so you can edit. Or if you are on the main screen right here on this program, the program edit will take you there. The program edit, this button is where you go to edit whatever program that you have. If you have a drum program, well, the interface is going to be a drum program. If you have key groups, it's going to be key groups, you know, uh, it's different for all the different types of programs. But in the case of the plugins, it will give you this interface. So when you are on this screen, whatever you see at the top, at the bottom, sorry, uh, this belongs to the actual, you know, the actual uh, preset, the actual uh, plugin. And you can, you know, just select something and you can change the values. And you can usually with all the different uh, programs, you can change something about it with the Q links. That is, this one changes the waveform, right? So and you have, of course, the four rows. Now, all the different instruments have different taps. 
So, you know, it's not something that I can teach you right now because it would be a tutorial or guide about a very specific instrument. It's like teaching you a synthesizer. All of them will have a different sound. If I go here, it may ch maybe change, uh, change it to tube synth and then I go to edit instrument, notice that the interface is completely different. Now, all the different instruments, what they share is the part right here at the top. Right here, if you tap it, it's not gonna let you change the program you are on Tim, but right here you can, if you must, change to a different preset. And if you double tap it, it's gonna give you the previous screen, remember, the one that we have at the beginning uh, when we are on main, so you can go to different uh, presets or categories and select something new from there. Now at the top, you have a few more options. This one is the automation, it's a different topic, but you know, right now it's on read. When you tap, it's gonna be on record. Uh, so if you record or you play and you record, you can move you know, different uh, params and this will record the automation. We talk about automation on a different video. Um, right here, you have the uh, load and you have the save. So right now, when we use a preset, if we change it, it will only work on the current project. So if you create some new sound that you really like, you know, you want to, you know, you want to save it and you can save it on the project. But the thing is that when you save it on the project, you cannot use it on a different project. So let's say that um, I'm gonna be changing some of the primes. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm just gonna do something new. Let's say I want to save this custom preset I just created. So if you go right here, it will let take you, you know, to the internal. And this at the top, the location is kind of already there. Now, if you go to your SD card, you can store it on your SD cards, but it will not be part of the presets of the program. It will be, you know, on a random uh, folder. It will not just load it. If you want to save maybe a new preset, you need to save it on the default place that you get right here at the top. So if I go and do J, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna do, uh, do it. And then I'm gonna be saving my new preset. And notice now it's called JJJ. Now the thing is that now this is a user preset. Notice that you are on the user category. So if I go back uh, right here, you have the user ones. So you have it right there. If you, again, like I said before, if you store it on a different place, you're not going to be able to find it. You will need to maybe, and you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose my SD card. I am on XMB. This is the uh, episode uh, six. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. I'm going to create a new directory. This one is going to be EP06. I'm going to do it. And I'm inside that directory. And I'm going to be saving it uh, right here. Maybe I'm going to say JJ2, something like that. So I'm storing this preset on that place. Now, if I save it, it's gonna save the preset and that's fine. Now it's loading it from there. But if I double tap it, it's not gonna take you to the user presets. It's just a preset. If I go here and go to user, you don't get JJJ2, you just get JJJ. So again, I'm telling you this because maybe if you store it on your project and one day you want to use it, and you don't have that project anymore or that directory, it's not going to show up right here. If you want to store it on users, whenever you save, you store it on the default location. Let me just choose a different preset, whatever, it doesn't matter. Now we have a Ultra Evil, all right. So we have a different uh, preset. I want to load the JJJ2 that I have on my directory. So you need to go to this one. This one is the open. The open will show you the user ones, but you know, I want to go to X and B. I want to go to episode six and then and only then I can choose and then load the preset. I'm gonna go and load it, select it and then load it. And then only then we have the two, but you know, you need to do the extra work. So I have this preset from factory and right here you see something that says favorites. So if you go there, it will take you to the favorites uh, screen. And notice that this is the same than before. And this is the first tap. When you tap it, you know, we have the uh, usual tap. So right here, whenever you have a preset loaded, you can store it as a favorite. Now, the only thing you need to do is you need to go to the square where you want to save it to the slot and you just need to press and hold. And there we go. It will let you know which uh, plugin you're using, which instrument, and then of course the name. If you do the same thing, when you have a slot assigned, when you press and hold, it will tell you clear or overwrite. So you can just clear that preset, or if you want to maybe store a different preset to the same one, 
you can do overwrite and it will replace your favorite. I'm going to go to an empty project. So I'm creating a project from the scratch. So I will go to plugin. When you create a new project from factory, uh, you can have this configuration. It's going to say that you want to always load when you load an instrument, a tube synth, and then they reach as well. But maybe you want a different plugin and a different preset as a default. You can change this. If you go to the menu and you go to preferences, right here, you go to project defaults and you will need to scroll down. At some point, you're going to find something that says default plugin a plugin synth that is just default plugin and then synth now if you double tap right here you can choose a different instrument in this case i'm going to leave it on tube, tube synth because it's the default and again i'm since i'm teaching but you know if you have a different plugin like uh, the uh like the minimog plugin uh, or the uh, juno one and you want to use that one all the whole time this is a good idea if not you know you every time that you go to a a uh, instrument uh, program you need to manually go there and just change it and it kind of sucks okay now we need to talk about effects now the effects plugins and the effects uh, the instrument uh, programs are kind of a related so if you skip the uh, first version the first part of this uh, video you might uh, feel a bit disconnected they share a lot of functions i have the tube synth on this program it doesn't matter maybe i'm gonna Maybe I'm gonna select something else. Eh, I guess that's fine. Where do you ca where can you add uh, effects plugins? Well, you can add them all over the place. If you go to the track mix and you go to you know that plugin right here, you have the inserts, so you can tap that there and you can add a plugin. If you go to the uh, channel strip, you can add a plugin right there and when i say plugging you know i mean inserts which are effects so you have a lot of places where you can add the inserts and even if you are using um let me go back if i let's say i'm gonna go to the track number two and this one is a drum program this one has all the pets and i'm gonna bring maybe I'm gonna go to browse and bring i don't know there you go i'm gonna load that kit so you're bringing a uh kit what you can do with the drum program is that you can go and edit all the uh, or maybe add inserts to the pets. I'm going to go to shift, I'm going to hold it and go to pet mix. And this is the pets of the uh, program. It's not the track mix, it's the pet mix. So still, you know, if I go to the snares or hats and we already talked about this on the episode number two, you can select a pet and add an insert or an effect to that pet only now then also you have the track mix not the pad mix like i said before you can just like your track add the inserts there but then at the top notice that you have audio tracks so midi tracks you cannot add uh, inserts here but you know audio tracks programs uh, return so you can add uh, effects all over the place okay i'm gonna go back maybe to the first one which you know it was a plugin maybe i'm gonna select the plugin and i'm gonna rename it to mic and I'm going to rename this plugin tool as well, so we can know that it's mic plugin. This one is just nothing. And what I want to do, I want to add some effects to this one. I can do it through here. I'm going to go to the uh, strip. And now when you go to the inserts, you can have this options and then you have more options at the top right here. It will let you know which plugin that you're using. Notice if I go back, it will take you back. So you, you already know where you are, you know, which section or where you are, you're adding the plug, the, uh, the effects and right here. It's just pretty simple. It works just like selecting a plugin. You just need to tap or right here to tap it and it will let you know all the different effects that you have. If you have, uh, you want to go to dynamic type of effects like compressors, gates and you know all that modulation like you know delay and in this case maybe i want to do a simple reverb you can use your hands if you want i much prefer to use the the, the wheel and whenever you're ready you just press it and there you go you have the reverb now when you want to edit you need to go to the pencil and if you want to turn it off you can turn it off but you know you can turn it back on if you want to delete it you just press the trash icon and right here, there's not much of science. It's just like the plugins. That is that the interface is pretty much the same, right? At the bottom, you have the controls for, you know, uh, the uh, different uh, plugin. But then you can load presets, just like we did with the instruments. 
it works the same way. You can save, uh, you can load and you can save. And again, it's just the same deal. If you want to save a preset, you need to keep it on internal. So like I said before, a lot of the functions are pretty much the same, right? Because they are just plugins and instruments. Uh, I'm gonna go back and I want to show you something cool. Of course, you can uh, use up to four effects. You cannot use more. Now, right here, when you go to this section, it says factory effects racks. So this is a collection of, you know, X amount of effects. So if uh, I, I'm working with a, I don't know, keyboard right here, it will give you maybe some presets that you can, of course, save and uh, maybe go to grand piano. Well, maybe this one was not a right example. I'm going to do this one and this one is good. So what it will do, it will give you a combination of different effects that you get from factory. And this will, of course, in this case is using an enhancer, a fuss and a delay. So you can quickly create a chain or a, an effects rack, just like you would do on a DAW. And these options that you have, you have right here are the same options that you have here. You can load an effects rack or you can save it and it works the same way. If I want to save it, you need to keep it on the effects rack. If not, you know, you can go to internal and storage on your custom location. If I play something, you can turn them all off at once or turn them all on. Cool. Now, when you are inside of an instrument, I'm sorry, a, a plugin at the top, you have these options. You can turn it on and off from here. Pretty simple. But you can also, and this is super useful when you're editing a chain, you can go to the second one in the chain, the third one, and so on and so on and so on. So this is actually really useful when you are playing something, maybe you're playing back and you want to change something about the uh, effects. This is, you know, Super cool. I'm gonna go back, and if you want to, uh, you know, again, dispose this uh, this rack, you just can type press, 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 and gone. And that's pretty much it. Uh, because, again, like I said before, a lot of the functions that you get are pretty much the same uh, with the plugin instruments. So we kind of already talked about this. Just like the instruments, the Q links will control some aspect about the. Uh, uh, plugin, you know, the effects. And if you want to change to different rows, you will always get a yellow indicator letting you know what you can change. Now we're going to talk about cue links on a different video because this is, this can get really wild. If I press and hold, that, is, that you get this. And so you, you can configure your cue links. Right now I'm just using the factory ones because, you know, I'm just teaching, but you know, much later, we're going to talk about how to customize all of this. I'm going to go back and that's pretty much it about effects. All right, so if you liked all this, please like and subscribe. And uh, this channel is supported by viewers only. If you want to buy me a coffee to say thanks and help the channel keep going on, you can. You have links at the description for PayPal, YouTube things, and Patreon. And all right, so we are done on this one. Uh, I'll see you on the next chapter, which is going to be about pad and track mute.